the truth. Paramount Pictures presents The Freak. This movie won't just scare you, it will fuck you up for life. People in Fukushima are angry with the way TEPCO has handled the leaks. Three have filed a criminal complaint against the company and its top management. TEPCO's management feared bankruptcy and kept putting off the necessary measures. Such negligence went on for about two years, resulting in the current situation. And the company didn't tell the government that conditions were critical. Jaguar, for men who'd like hand jobs from beautiful women that you hardly know. Kawaii says his clients accused TEPCO and third executives of violating anti-pollution regulations. President Naomi Hirose is one of the people named in the suit. The plaintiffs accuse Hirose of failing to take adequate protection measures because of the high cost. They say TEPCO's management approach didn't change even after the nuclear accident. TEPCO officials declined to comment. Well, joining me in Daha is a former nuclear scientist with the Iraqi Atomic Energy Commission, Ahmad Khadouri. Good to have you with us. First of all, help us to understand what is actually happening. Is radiation rising or are investigators just getting better at recording the real level? They are getting better. They're using uh, instruments which will detect higher levels of radiation. So the level hasn't actually changed? Is that what you're saying? No, or? there's leakage, which is serious. Uh, the, there are uh, 1,060 tanks, stainless steel water tanks, that are holding the water, which they keep pumping into the, into the uh, damaged reactors and the uh, uh, spent fuel storage mm -hmm. pools. So that water, when it comes out, it's ra radioactive, very so radioactive. Is that, I mean, the question I'm getting at, the water coming out of that particular tank, is the radiation level rising? In the outside the tank, yes. Inside the tank. So that's a that's a big deal, isn't it? It is a bit. Well, it is a problem, a big problem. Uh, th they they have 1,060 of them, and apparently they have been there for two years, and some of them have rusted or they are leaking, mm. and that's a lot to look after. But the point is that it's within the plant. It's not outside the plant. It's not, uh, except it's going into the sea, into the Pacific Ocean. Oh. And the only people who have suffered are the fishermen. What do you want? Uh, because the levels of contaminated fish last week have, has risen. So, so some of this water is getting out. It's not just confined to the tank and the plant, right? Yes, yes it goes into How the... How much of a threat is it, other than, as you mentioned, to the fish? Well, as far as uh, the public, they are not accepted. They only eat the fish, and the fishermen cannot catch the fish. When do you want it? <laughs> this shows though that the problem is not really under control. It will it? not be under control for it's estimated between 40 and 100 years from now. That's a long time to wait. For yeah, that's three. what the experts estimate. Now in the case of, um, um, uh, of Russia, Chernobyl, they simply buried the whole hmm. plant, one plant, with cement. Like a, like a tomb, and they still have to keep worrying whether anything goes underneath. Here, there is a lot of groundwater coming from the mountains, from the rain, and every day about 300 tons sweeps under the plants, takes some low-level radioactivity into the sea, and that's difficult to control. Does now, that open up the, I mean, the idea of something sitting there for 40 to 100 years, I mean, another major catastrophe could unfold because of another I don't know, natural disaster, another meltdown? Well, if there is another earthquake, a serious one, six, seven, eight or nine magnitude, that would rattle all these 1,060 tanks, it would rattle the, the, the damaged cores, spent fuel, who, whose structures have already weakened, yes, that's a potential very, very serious threat if another strong earthquake hits the same area again. It looks like foreign help is being invited now to come and deal with this. Will that, yes. will that speed up your very scary timeline there of 40 to 100 years? Well, the, inter uh, the International Atomic Energy Agency, IEA, has been, uh, have, they have sort of um, chastised KEPCO for not really giving all for information. And they've been telling them about these tanks for some time. And now 
it's suddenly it's the level is raised to three and IEA is not that pleased mm -hmm. with this kind of monitoring of the, of the situation they are going to assist with their experts but they are facing a huge problem difficult very difficult problem to solve and I don't know how much bright new ideas they might throw in this honesty I, it's a terrific concept we don't know much about it I want to get you on it Meanwhile, experts from Japan's nuclear regulator are looking for active faults beneath other power plants. They're currently visiting the Higashidori plant in northern Japan to conduct a second on-site survey. The officials are examining distortions and the earth near faults that run underneath the compound. They believe two of them may still be active. And Emery can barely keep up with the demand. Plant operator Tohoku Electric Power Company says it has new data to prove they're not, and is calling for a debate on the matter. The regulator bans power companies from operating nuclear plants on active faults. What's so funny now? I've done some just think funny things. The Higashidori plant is one of four nuclear facilities where its officials are carrying out on-site surveys. They've already ruled that a reactor at the Tsuruga plant in Fukui Prefecture, central Japan, sits on an active fault. They also say there are no active faults at the Oe plant in the same prefecture. Japanese leaders are taking charge of the effort to address the crisis at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The facility is generating 400 tons of contaminated water every day, partly due to groundwater seeping into damaged reactor buildings. Officials have approved a plan to spend about $470 million to deal with the problem. They'll use the money to decontaminate the water and to try to contain the leaks. They plan to do that by freezing soil around the reactors. We've drawn up a basic plan to achieve a fundamental solution to the problem of radioactive water, instead of reacting to each new problem as it comes up. Abe said people around the world are watching whether Japan can successfully resolve the Fukushima crisis. He pledged that his administration will make an all-out effort. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga will lead a panel of government ministers to oversee work at the plant. Officials will be stationed near the site to improve communications with workers and with the plant's operator. Those responsible for the only two nuclear reactors still operating in Japan are shutting them down for regular inspections. That will leave all of the country's nuclear power generators idle for the first time in about 14 months. Workers with Kansai Electric turned off the number three reactor at the OE plant early Tuesday. They'll do the same with the number four reactor in about two weeks. Experts and members of the Nuclear Regulation Authority say a fault running beneath the OE plant is not active. They agree that the fault has not moved recently and has no possibility of moving in the future. The government bans the operation of atomic power facilities above active faults. Operators of the OE facility and five other plants have applied for safety screening to restart their reactors. It's not clear whether the Nuclear Regulation Authority will give the utilities the green light. The president of Japan's Olympic Committee says Tokyo is safe enough to host the 2020 Summer Games. Until he gets a little help I'm quite visibly moved. from some people who can barely keep up with reality. Sunekazu Takeda has sent a letter to all other members of the International Olympic Committee, assuring them that radiation levels in the air and water in Tokyo are normal. Takeda was responding to international concerns that some of the contaminated water at Fukushima Daiichi reached the Pacific Ocean. The last go, we'll see the first three go before her. Meteorologists say a tornado that struck an area near Tokyo was the result of some unusual weather. They say a type of thunderstorm called a supercell created the twister. Such storms contain rotating updrafts of air and they can be deadly. The winds whipped up in mid-afternoon. They left a trail of debris in the city of Koshigaya. More than 60 people were injured. About 600 buildings were damaged. Roughly speaking, the cloud wasn't even 500 meters above the ground. That's really low. The funnel measured somewhere between 50 to 100 meters across. It was one of the largest tornadoes ever in Japan. 
Scientists at Japan's meteorological agency have surveyed the damage. They've determined the tornado's strength. They say it measured one or higher on a scale between zero and five. The scientists say a level one tornado packs winds of about 120 to 175 kilometers per hour. How about a little fire, scarecrow? Oh. Oh. Ah! You cursed brat! Look what you've done! Some Japanese lawmakers want to impose tough prison terms on public officials who leak important secrets. They've approved the outline of a bill to protect sensitive information about national security. A working group from the ruling Liberal Democratic Party is in charge of the bill. The outline says some security information should be protected by strict confidentiality. And it recommends that public officials who leak such information serve up to 10 years in jail. All right. Well, major uh, Japanese companies are joining hands now to encourage foreign tourists to spend more in the country. They have set up an organization in an effort to double sales to those visitors. The Japan Shopping Tourism Organization has been established by about 20 companies. They're in the tourism, retail, and related businesses. Thank you.